Underwriting for The Money Doctor Show is provided by Ryan and Casey Lickers, Main Street, Greenfield. Exploring the world one glass at a time. West County Equipment Rental of Shelburne. Daily, weekly, monthly rentals. 625-6463 or on the web at westcountyequipment.com. The Franklin County Community Development Corporation. Growing sustainable businesses and communities since 1979 www.fccdc.org Weld Communications, marketing and publicity Helping businesses spread the word in the Pioneer Valley and beyond www.weldwords.com There's a better life if I could be debt free But all my money is a mystery I was feeling overwhelmed and it was wearing thin when I knocked on the door and heard the doctors in Oh, the doctors in, the doctors in She got the right prescription to help you win Oh, the doctors in, the money doctors in Hello, I'm Dr. Frances Rayum, president of Power Down Debt, a positive debt management company. Welcome to the Money Doctor Show. My guest today is Adam Harrington, retired NBA player, basketball player, obviously, NBA, and a philanthropist, mentor, role model. We could, <laughs> you don't have enough titles for me to get in the show. Thank you for being here. Thanks for having me. I'm so excited to be here. Yeah, you're just excited in general. <laughs> Look at you. That's the sportsman in you, right? It is, it is. So I need to go back and get a little bit of background about you. Um, but as I was mentioning when we were off camera, most of our shows have something to do with putting someone who has an interesting story in the guest seat and that I think might inspire someone in the future. So oddly enough, even though I want to get some basketball background about you, it isn't that that inspired us to have you on the show so much as it is what you're doing now. Yeah. So um, tell me a little bit about, let's build the background about what it's like to be Adam Harrington. You're 13 years old, you play varsity basketball. I did, I Talk did. Talk to I, me about I that. I grew up in a little small Berniston right here, neighboring to Greenfield, um, and basketball was my sport. I loved it. Yeah. Um, I was engulfed in it. I dreamed of playing in the NBA, and I went to locally here to Pioneer Valley Regional School, played for both Perry Messer, who's coaching at Northampton now, and Scott Thayer, who coaches at Greenfield High School, mm -hmm. um, were two of my mentors and coaches, and yeah, I got to play varsity as an eighth grade, and kind of build up and um, had a really good high school career. Um, you know, played in yeah. All-American games and things like that. Went on to get a full scholarship to play Division One basketball. You know, one of my short-term dreams was to play in the ACC and coming from this area, a lot of people laughed and thought, the skinny white kid from, you know, but like always, I, I dreamed big you showed and, them. and, yeah. and I, I loved it and I connected myself with the right people and we were able to make that happen. So, and then from there, I went on to play in the NBA for a year and a half and then I played for seven and a half years elsewhere, so nine years total around the world. I played in six different countries Yeah. Um, until about three years ago. I just recently retired and moved on to the next chapter. Okay, so a really a nice high school career. 2,347 points. I did, That's, yes. For yeah. those of us doing the math, at two points a basket, which I know is yeah. not your specialty, three points is your specialty. <laughs> That's 1,200 baskets almost. That's insane. Yeah, we had a, but I mean, with that being said, we had an unbelievable team. We yeah. had really good coaches. I mean, we won back to back state championships. I lost again in my senior year. Um, we had five other people score 1,000 points in our program during that year. Um, we were really good. We had something really special, and I was. You know, I'm so grateful that I was able to be a part of it, and we all worked together. And yeah, scoring was my thing, and leading, yeah. and and things like that. But yeah, I loved it, and it was, it was such a unique opportunity and such a unique situation because being from a small school, five towns make up your school, and what we what we were able to accomplish, and we literally, I mean, I firmly believe we helped inspire a generation. Uh, um, you know, we did a lot of things. The community came together. I can just remember all those parts. Which, when you get old, older like I'm getting, that's what you remember. Like. Yeah. The, the the arena or the sorry the gymnasium being sold out for the you know an hour before the JV game to watch the varsity game and, yeah. and things like that and the town coming together and the dinners and the money that was raised to build the new school you know was, you know I didn't get to step foot in the brand new school when I was there <laughs> but we you know not saying that but just being a part of all that as we grew sure. and there's a new Burnson Elementary School and so many things have changed it's it's exciting to, to have been a part of that. So that um, being involved in Community Bug really got you at a young age. Yeah. Not, not everybody would see it like that. 
No, you wouldn't. You know, like I always, you know, try to. And one of my daily prayers is, you want I wanted to have a giving heart. You know, some people always you give in different ways. You know, and yes. uh, sometimes you're not always giving the right way. Um, but you know, especially when you're younger and things like that. But I, I've always wanted to do that. You know, through the basketball, always training kids for free and working with kids and working camps and and things like that. And um, and I've been very fortunate that uh, after I finished, decided to finish playing basketball, that I came into some opportunities where I could continue to give in ways and, and start to see it. And, and I know what people did for me, to not only to accomplish my dreams, but for all the people around me, all my teammates, all my friends, and in the community as I grew up, I remember those important people that helped us do certain things and yeah. made things available to us. And I mean, I would love to be a part of returning that for, for the next generation. Of course, I have a young son who's six and one that's one. And um, wow. so it's exciting. Favorite mentor, when you're talking, you're so grateful about all the people that helped you. It, and it just made me think, is there somebody in particular that stood out in your life as a role model for you? I mean, locally it was Scott Thayer, who's now the varsity awesome. coach at, 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 at uh, Greenfield. I mean, there is, no, I mean, there was a variety of people, um, but Scott, you know, he was my age, literally. So what I'm doing for kids now, Scotty did for me. And uh, so he was about 32 and I was 16, 17, 18. I mean, I knew Scotty from when I was 12, but I mean, and he was one of my best friend. He would come over from school. We'd play basketball all day long. I would ride he my would. bike to Northfield. He would beat me. I would ride my back back to Bernstein's crying the whole way. He'd be driving <laughs> in the car next to me. You're going to come back and play. We're going up there five and 10 by Pioneer. And I turn around and go back. And I just remember all the battles, all the tears, all the joy. And, and you know, we were able to accomplish things. But I'll, I'll never forget. You know, I sometimes go back through some of the letters and things he wrote me. And, and we went through it. And it's, it, it, was, it was a great time. And he was extremely close with our whole family, extremely close with my sister and mom and everybody. So that's that's somebody that uh, really helped me change your life, it changed my life, right. and you know we're still great friends to this day. So you know what's fascinating to me about that is you didn't say he let me have my way. He always let me win. You didn't say that at all. He beat your butt. Oh, he sure did. And yeah. And now my six-year-old son Jaden is not too happy about it because not only will <laughs> I not let him win in basketball, but he doesn't beat me in Uno. He doesn't beat me in anything. But <laughs> no, he said you'll win one day, but you'll earn it. You that's know? right. And, but it was great. Like I said, I encourage people now. I always played against older kids, and yeah. you know I got in situations that weren't comfortable for me, you mm -hmm. know, and I really got out of my comfort zone. And, right. and I think it's um, almost the last thing this, this day and age. I mean, I think a lot of families, you're always trying to find the perfect situation and you're trying to control right. it and it, with sports and in general with schools and things like that. But I was just so happy that my parents found something that they believed in and they dropped me off. Yes. They dropped me off and yes. they, they did, you know, they parented from, from the sideline. And I right. still thank my mom and dad to, the, to this day that they did find the right situation. And, and you try to find the right situation, but there's times you eventually have to do it right. and you have to trust it. That's and, right. I mean, I'm sure they were careful yeah. about where they were dropping you. Exactly. They, they had and, done their research, and, but, but then step back and let the kid grow. Absolutely. Right? And, right. you know, you, you try to connect yourself with the right people and, yeah. and things will, the good things will happen. Okay. So you come from Bernardston, Mass. Tiny little hamlet of a town, <laughs> right? Um, you go, you play varsity at age 13. You're essentially a basketball phenom, 1998 Gatorade player of the year, basketball player of the year. The, the accolades go on and on and on. You leave Bernardston, Mass, and you go play in the NBA. <laughs> yeah. What? Cultural wake-up call? What? How does it that was. You know, going from college, of course, first, but I had traveled so much in the summers, even young. I took off for six weeks. I played on an AAU program out of Boston, mm -hmm. so I had got used to traveling and being on my own and okay and being around different type of people. I mean, you have. Okay. there is, you know, I mean, obviously, growing up in this area, you're only exposed to certain things, but I had right. played all over, and, and it was great. You know, it really helped me socially um, and, and being on my own and things like that, and then... Uh, but the NBA, I mean, it was a dream come true. I'll never forget when, when Don Nelson, the coach of the Mavericks, came to me, and this is how he, he called me Rook. Yeah. He said, hey, Rook, I think your bank account's gonna be a little bigger. <laughs> That's all he said to me. He didn't say I made it. He said, I, you know, so I took it like, okay, I got a check coming. And I remember running up the stairs, getting on my cell phone, and my sister was the first person I called. And then, of course, I called my mom. But, you know, it was, you know, it was a dream. Whether, I mean, my NBA career was not 15 years, in, or five years. Um, right. But um, I made it. You yes. know what I mean? That's one oh, thing yeah. I'll always be able to, you know what I mean? And nobody can we don't go that. around talking about, but it's like, yep. I mean, dreams do come true. And I, and I made it. And it's something that nobody can ever take away from you. And, and it's great. And then I, the way and what I did to get to that point, I need to use 
in other things, not in my, in my parenting, in my marriage, in my right. next things. You know, you take those same qualities, those same principles. That's, right. that's I think that's what people say when they talk about, you know, get your kids involved in sports because there's so much they gain out of it besides the energy and the exercise and all. You really gain uh, some skills there that you might not have otherwise. Yeah. It's not that sports is the only route to do that, but involved in music, involved in community, involved some way other than just being inward all the time. Absolutely. And learn how to interact with other people and what it's like to care about somebody else's feelings or help someone in a selfless fashion, all of that. It is um, life skills, and I think it's very yeah. important, especially in this day and age that a lot of sports are getting cut and user fees are raised and budgets in it. It hurts my heart to see yeah, that type of things yeah. happen because I can remember the sense of family and some kids that might be the only family they have. And I remember yeah. being in those situations and, yeah, and things like that, not only but the coaches and things like that. So I think it's a good challenge to all of us and especially my generation of parents coming up and the next ones that we continue to do whatever we can to fund these things and right. hence the foundation that we've done and things like that, you know, how we can continue to make this stuff possible for because it is so important for these kids. Yeah, um, we're going to take a break in a couple minutes, and I want to talk the whole second half about the foundation and the work that you're doing now. Um, but I want to get a little tiny bit of uh, information about between high school and the NBA, you hit North Carolina State University, and there's some things like that in there. Tell me about that. Yeah, so I took my freshman, life. I went to the ACC, so I signed with North Carolina State mm -hmm. um, out of high school, and I went and was freshman of the year, led the team's first freshman ever to lead the team in scoring at NC State. Mm -hmm. Had a really good year, typical freshman year, up and yeah. down, yeah. peaks and valleys. And then the reality of the NBA really started to come into play. Like I had some big games, yeah. and you had some scouts talking to you and things like that. And um, But also, with that being said, it was, it was a tough year for us as a team, you know, the, the atmosphere had changed a little bit and I went from being a gung-ho little white guy all excited all the time yeah. to in a gym all the time to the locker room had kind of gotten to me and I was chiming in and I'm complaining and one day I looked at myself and I said Adam this isn't you and this isn't you know mm -hmm. so I decided that I might want to transfer so I ended up transferring I took my five visits um, to schools again and I ended up transferring to Auburn University and and played there two years and and played very well as well and and uh and then from there, I moved on in, in to the NBA. But so, it, I mean, I, I got to play in the ACC and the SEC for basketball, which are two of the top conferences. Right. And at the time, the ACC was uh, it was a lot better than it is now. It was phenomenal, and um, and I got to play against and made some friends for life and with those coaches and stuff. And and I often tell kids now that are going through college, it's the so it's such a great time. Don't don't waste it or you know enjoy right. it. Some of the best friends you'll ever have in your life are ones that you'll make in college, and yeah. you'll stay connected, and you're building your network, and and um, and it all came true for me now. As you know, fast forward, you know, 10, 12, 15 years later, when I'm in a different part of my life and I'm calling back on some of those networks and connections, you really can judge what they meant to you and right. how your impression was on them and and things like that. So it's mm. it's it's exciting to see it all come come full circle. It's interesting how those sorts of experiences, um, college or travel or um, things that are larger than your little hometown experience, shape your life. And you spent time in China, Spain, Germany, Europe. I mean, you were all over the place. Tell me a little bit about the travel. Um, what was that like to travel at, as an NBA player? And yeah, I, I mean, do people recognize you in other countries immediately? or? How does that feel? Yeah, it's uh, I, in being honest, it took me. I had a great contract in Italy right when I left the NBA, but I didn't. I went over there and I didn't take it. I wasn't in the right frame of mind yet. Italy. I was still kind of like yeah. um, an NBA player and you know right. um, things like that and the luxury of it and things like that. But once I adjusted myself and realized I can make a great living in Europe and I love to travel. You know, my first contract was in Spain and Los Palmos and Gran Canaria, which was gorgeous. Um, then I played in Israel, China. Yeah. Um, Poland, France, Croatia, Germany, wow. um, some great places, and I loved it. We loved it. When my wife traveled me the last three years I played, and my son was in three different countries, mm -hmm. um, and we loved it. We loved the challenge of going into a new culture, learning a new language, meeting new friends, having our own routine, yeah. um, and being part of a family. Of course, you know whether they knew you because you might have played in the NBA, they knew you because they loved their basketball team there, and they knew that you were the incoming American. Thank so you. yeah, you, you definitely kind of reap some of the benefits of being a star player over here as well um, but it was great we re, we really enjoyed it we always traveled we always sightseed and mm. um, it was uh, I was very very fortunate to be able to do those type of things um, when you enter the NBA and your what was it rookie your checks about to get rookie yeah. your checks about to get a little larger yeah. 
That has got to pose some interesting challenges. What do you do? I mean, here you are, a kid from Bernardston, all of a sudden you have this influx of large cash, large amount of money, and people wanting things from you and pressure and all of that. I mean, I'm the money doctor. I can't let you out of here without talking about what do you do with that money? How do you manage that? Yeah, you know, you I, and I can't sit here and say I made all the right decisions. Of course, you know, I was a, a 21 year old single white guy playing mm -hmm. for the Dallas Mavericks. Mm -hmm. Um, going back to my comment before, always having a giving heart, you didn't always necessarily give the right way. I might have <laughs> paid all the bar tabs or, you know, in a sense that's giving, but it's not, you know. But um, no, it, it, it was, it was uh, difficult. I didn't buy a car right away, which most people do, yeah. um, but I moved my sister out. She came to live with me and she ended up getting hired by Mark Cuban. Your sister and, Jill. My sister Jill. Yeah. And so she came to Dallas with me and uh, it was good. My mom was a CPA of 35 years, so, uh -huh. and she is the money Nazi and she does really good. <laughs> Um, but and she would say I've I've I could have done better, but you know moms are always right. We could so always do better. We sit right? and talk about it now. If you had listened to me or told you so, but um, I was fortunate. I you know I kept having jobs and playing in Europe, and I was able to make good money there and stuff. So um, I, I'm very grateful that basketball allowed me to travel and see the world for essentially free, but also supported my family as we grew and and then ultimately as we made a transition into our next aspect of life. Having money and coming from you know, a smaller town and all that. You've experienced both ends of the spectrum. You're now doing something incredible with work for the, uh, with the foundation that is named after your sister, Jill. So when we come back, I want to talk about all of that. But I'm sure this has given you a frame of reference that's different than you might have had without your background. Absolutely. All right. We'll be back in a moment. Underwriting for The Money Doctor Show is provided by Ryan and Casey Liquors, Main Street, Greenfield. Exploring the world one glass at a time. West County Equipment Rental of Shelburne. Daily, weekly, monthly rentals. 625-6463 or on the web at westcountyequipment.com. The Franklin County Community Development Corporation. Growing sustainable businesses and communities since 1979 www.fccdc, Weld Communications, Marketing and Publicity. Helping businesses spread the word in the Pioneer Valley and beyond. www.weldwords.com. The Jill E. Harrington Hanslick Memorial Fund is a 501c3 nonprofit organization that was uh, launched in June of 2010 and it solely benefits the, uh, children from all over the country. Jill, my sister, she was a beautiful 33-year-old woman, um, really family-oriented and very loving. And the reason we started this is Jill had some impact on so many people's lives, including myself and a lot of our family and friends. And her impact was not only felt just in the Western Mass area, but all throughout the country. My sister was eight and a half months pregnant at the time that she passed away with a baby boy who was born but didn't make it as well. Um, his name was Chase, so we adapted this Chase Your Dreams slogan and it's kind of stu stuck with us and we've grown with that and that kind of established everything of what the foundation we really wanted it to be. Obviously solely benefiting kids, allowing them to continue on and chase their dreams. So the Jilly Harrington Hanslick Memorial Fund has given back several grants since we started in 2010 um, to individuals, to groups, to organizations, to schools, um, ranging from sports camps in the summer, cheerleading groups traveling for competitions, school field trips, model congress, playground construction. Um, we've also just recently granted a couple um, music departments with new instruments. And it ranges from sports to educational stuff to performing arts. We've helped uh, special needs children with a, through a farming connection program. We recently received a grant for scholarships for two um, young people to go to farming connections. Both young men have had um, multiple breakthroughs while in their therapies there, and they've bonded with the animals, and they um, have basically a place where they go that they know they're happy and they're welcome. It's very hard to get funding for these programs and it means the world to us. We are here today at the JEHH Memorial Courts and Garden in Burniston, Massachusetts. This project began with a vision over two years ago about giving back to local communities and children a quality, beautiful, and safe place to play. 
Within two years, through various fundraising activities and the generous donations of so many, we have completed our first shovel in the ground project and turned an unusable area into a beautiful memorial. We need your help. If we are to continue this work, we are in need of your assistance. There are so many ways you can give back to our foundation and children all over. If you would like to learn more or make a donation now, you can visit our website at chaseyourdreamsnow.org. Giving back is an incredible and contagious feeling, and we hope you join our mission to help and encourage so many to Chase your dreams. Tell us about your sister, Jill. My sister was four years older than me, yeah. um, and quickly she grew up, loved basketball, probably loved basketball more than I did. She just couldn't play. Um, to give a kind of a quick story, she went on to play at York College, which is a small Division three school in Pennsylvania. Mm -hmm. And she called back to my mom. She's like, Mom, I'm working my way down the bench. I'm actually holding the Aww. clipboard and the towels now. You know, she's like, <laughs> she I had think a sense I, of humor, though. She did. She did. She's like, I think I'm going to come back. She, so she transferred back to UMass Amherst into uh, sports management. And Good she choice. was able to see me play in my senior. You know, she was my biggest fan, biggest supporter. Um, so it was great. I loved having her back. And uh, and then she always had a dream of of being involved in basketball. So she worked locally for indoor action for years. Yeah. And then she was kind of in in, in limbo of what she's to do. And I was down at Auburn. Uh, in college and I said hey why don't you come down you can do some stuff for the basketball program and she worked at Victoria's Secret just to make ends meet and then yeah. that year I went on to play at Dallas and of course the first person when I made it I said I'm bringing you out here so she came yeah. to live with me and um, and then Mark Cuban and then, right and yeah then, who I sat next to on the plane when we traveled I was just you know becoming good friends with him yeah. like hey my sister you know I said, hey let me meet her loved her hired her as a personal assistant Perfect. and uh, she stayed there for three years, and then she moved from there to New York City to work for the NBA. So she was in events management. So her running joke was always that she stayed in the NBA longer for me. She was there five years, and <laughs> I was there a year and a half. So she always had that up on me. But she made the dream of her NBA as well yeah. come true. And then um, most recently, she had come back home and met her husband at Mount Snow, where my younger brother works, Kevin. Um, and they had come back and got married. And I was, you know, maid of honor in Jill's wedding. <laughs> And, uh, <laughs> I which, paid cash money to see that. Yeah, yeah, right. I know. But um, which was which was great. And then they had bought a house, and, and she became pregnant with a little baby boy. Yeah. And then so a little under three years ago, um, my sister passed away from stage four undiagnosed colon cancer, and I was away playing in Poland, and in essentially my last professional contract. Um, and then we came home and. We were able to uh, do the services and stuff, and then immediately I decided that you know foundation was on my heart, and I had to beg and plead and get my mom on board. You know, I think everybody in the audience can understand why yes. it wasn't because oh. of the reason they might be thinking it was, no. you know. But it ultimately the best one of the best again. things ever was about two years ago. My mom said thank you for doing it, oh. which was great. You know, oh. she didn't want to at first because of course I can only imagine I have two kids. Um, but I mean, the things that we've been able to do in Jill's name and honor and keep it alive and she sees the responses of people, I think it's really helped her. And it was my way to grieve. Everybody grieves differently. That's right. You know, but mine is move forward That's and help you others. It. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, and, uh, and we've been able to do that. So many people have been involved and, and uh, you know, me and my mom may have founded it, but we're not even the most instrumental pieces because if it weren't for the people giving and the volunteers right. and, and, and the countless support, I mean, that's really what, yeah. you know, what, what does it. And uh, it's been an exciting, exciting time for us. And I, and <clears throat> excuse me, I, um, you know, decided to take a year off from basketball mm -hmm. and, and be with my brother and sister and, yeah. and, and of course my family and, um, and then it just kind of grown. My heart has shifted to helping others and I really wanted to make an impact, you know, and like I think anybody would when you lose somebody, you're wondering like if you were gone, what would, what would people think or what right. would be the impact or, or even in speaking candidly, might be like, well, how many people would show up at my funeral? Right. You know, I mean, right. who, you know, whether that doesn't really matter or not, but I was just overwhelmed by the impact that I did not know that my sister had on so many people. I knew mine. But, um, and it really inspired me. So she still to this day inspires me, encourages me. When I see things with her name, it's, it's her. People always say thank you to me. I was like, no, you need to thank her. You know what I mean? Because she, she's, really, she's really the one that's has continued to do that stuff in my life. And, and um, I'm very, very thankful that I'm even going to get to be a part of it. Well, I have to tell you, she just inspired me and you did it. Um, and you don't even know it. Uh, I didn't know Jill at all. And you were just telling the story. You had me running the gamut of emotions, from laughing about you were the maid of honor to you know the next thing where she passed away. 
but you said something about she loved the NBA, she wanted to play, she just couldn't play. Instead of just giving up on that, she found other practical ways to be involved. Be involved. Heavily involved. Yeah. I mean, the sports management thing was a, was a great choice, it was, but it, is, she just kept her finger in it and it led her to the next thing. The thing that you said that inspired me, and I'm hoping some kid hears this, is you said, well, you know, she came down, she was going to be involved in basketball, she worked at Victoria's Secret to make ends meet. She didn't say, well, I can't play basketball, so I guess I'm, you know, I guess I'm done. Yeah. She found a way to chase her dream and stay involved in that and work at Victoria's Secret to make ends meet. I'm sure, I mean, that is, you can't get much further from a basketball yeah, court absolutely. than Victoria's Secret, but that's what she did to make it work. So this whole thing that you do with this foundation where you help kids chase their dreams, um, that's a big message. Setting roots in the, of the foundation here was, was very, very important in being on the ground. You know, we mm -hmm. do have a lot of different things going on, but I just felt it on my heart that I really wanted to, to launch this and get it going well. Yeah. And some of it's my obsessive compulsive and, and things and wanting to be a perfectionist, but I, I, I really- call that discipline. Yeah, I <laughs> really, and I really have been steadfast in taking three years and saying, you know, I want it to be self-sustaining right. and we have our events in place and, and we're fundraising and we're building a network of donors and, and um, and we're growing, you know, growth is the most important thing because I didn't want to be a foundation that gave out something once a year right. or something that fizzled out after five, you know, and, right. and I think as everybody can understand, it's hard to raise money, you know, yeah. you know, that's yeah. the, that's the tough part. The, the right. best part is when you give about out or you do an event or, yes. you know what I mean? That's, that's the, the, the glorious part, but fundraising is such a huge part of it. But I figure there's no better person to ask for than in my sister's name. Yes. And, and, uh, and it's, and, and I've been, um, I guess I shouldn't say, I'm not pleasantly surprised at how the reaction's been. You know, mm. I think it's been easier than I thought, and I only have her to thank for that. Yes. And of right, all the other people are saying the same things. You know, it's, it's, they're loving sitting on the board, they're loving trying to raise, people are loving to volunteer in yeah. her name. And, and we tried to, my sister was in event management for the NBA, and that's what she did. And mm -hmm. I can't scratch the surface of what she did, and we can't, but we often say that uh, we try to, to put the Jill touch on it, and I think that's why people keep coming back to our events and I think that's why people love to volunteer for us because we've always let them know how much we love them and support them and try to take care of them and, and do things, um, to, I guess, first class, the best we could do for them. She sounds like such an amazing individual and I'm very interested in, in your relationship with her. Brothers and sisters, you know, there's, you've got to coach all kinds of kids that tell you they hate their sister or whatever. Yeah. Were you always close? Yeah, we were extremely close. My sister's one, but like we could, you know, bicker or fight with each other, but we'd yeah. talk to each other instantly. It's yeah. just, you know, you have, I think everybody, or my brother, a good Lord, we were competing still to this day, <laughs> uh, you know, and, um, but we just always, we were, we were extremely close. Um, and uh, yeah, I don't, I don't know, like we even joke like, uh, you know, when I moved her into Dallas, you know, my sister, uh, you know, had her room, room, about her bed, but she would be sleeping next to, next to me in my California King. Yeah. And, uh, you know, we'd be sitting Great. telling stories all night, you know, we just, there was just nothing better than, and, and talking to her and spending time and calling her and in our humor, we both had the same type of humor and, yeah. you know, and, and love to do things for other people. And, uh, you know, I just, as growing up, I mean, she would, would in a sense, was obviously my big sister was like a big, I loved her heart. I really yeah. loved her heart for helping others and, yeah. and giving to others and giving selflessly, expecting nothing in return. So um, it's really continuously been that way. Adam Harrington, thank you for doing this. Thanks so much for having me. My pleasure. I'm the money doctor. Until our next chat, keep it positive. There's a better life if I could be debt free But oh, my money is a mystery I was feeling overwhelmed and it was wearing thin When I knocked on the door and heard the doctor's in Oh, the doctor's in, the doctor's in She got the right prescription to help you win Oh, the doctor's in, the money doctor's in